John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto me, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is God, as I just told the Jehovah Witnesses, and God is Jesus Christ. There's only one way of salvation. And we come on the streets, we come downtown to preach to you, as the Bible proclaims, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. We're here to tell you the way of salvation, and the way is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Religion is man-made, Jesus Christ is God-approved. This is my beloved Son, I am well pleased in Him, the Father spoke from heaven. The Bible says and asks, like a question you will ask yourself, what must I do to be saved? And the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. As I turn to Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, I don't know if you ever asked yourself, why am I here? Why am I on this miserable planet with miserable diseases and troubles and problems? I've got the answer from the King James 1611 Bible why you are here. And when I tell you, you will be held accountable for not doing what God wants you to do. I will give you the reason why that you are here. And when you know the reason, and you fail to do, you will be guilty. And you will stand guilty before God. And before I say, why are we here? Let me tell you that the only reason why man is cast into hell is by his rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel according to the scriptures that Christ died for our sins and was buried and arose again the third day. Now, why are we here? Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. While I look around this world today and athletes and actresses and actors get the glory that God should get. I see man receiving honor where God should get it. But the Bible proclaims that God is worthy. It says for O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things, not evolution, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You are here to worship God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Worshiping career, money, sex, drugs, is a violation of what you were made for. You are proclaimed in the Bible to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Not religion, not cookies, not magazines, not wine, but Jesus Christ who is of God and is God. Luke 19. Luke 19. And you thought he was the great enforcer of the, the force and, and fighting his father, Darth Vader. No, Luke was a medical doctor that followed God. And Luke 19, let me find it real quick. I think that's the wrong reference. Luke 19.10 For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. How are you lost? You are going the way of hell. You are going the way of religion. You are going...
chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1.
the few. I stand here for the few that will turn to God. I stand here to most of you that will not turn to God. That you will not be able to stand before God one day and say, I never knew. But you have stood at not all my counsel. And God speaking, I will mock when your fear cometh. Because you're going to have the fear of God, chapter 1, verse 7. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if Obamacare got rid of all your prescriptions? And you would have nothing for your pain and your anxieties? And God looked down from heaven upon America and said, Ha ha! You didn't want to listen to me. You had brief prayer during 9-11, but you rather worship the enemies of the world of religion than the, the way, the truth, and the life. You can't continue in blessings when you reject God. But God is long-suffering, the Bible says. He giveth the rain upon the just and the unjust. God is long-suffering. He wants you to repent. He wants you to turn, even though you deny Him and reject Him. He's still offering out to you His Son, His payment, His prescription, His ways, that you will be saved. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In John chapter 3. In John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. The Bible proclaims God is love. Except you know God, you don't know what love is. Love is sacrifice. Love is giving. Whosoever lost men don't have a name in the Bible. You are whosoever. That's male, female, young, old, white, Asian, black, Chinese, American, Polish, Italian, and I can go on. That's you, whosoever. Without exclusion. For all have sinned. That's for every sinner, and that's you. Don't you come to me and say, I'm not a sinner. Because you'll be lying, and that's a sin. Bearing false witness. John 3.16 Whosoever believeth in Him. Not church. Not car. Not things. Whosoever believeth in Him, Jesus Christ. That rules out Mary. That rules out Muhammad. That rules out religion. That rules out science. That rules out education. That rules out whoever but Jesus. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I know I have eternal life. How about you? If you were to have a, a stroke, get hit by a car, a bomb fall down, and you were to die, where would you wake up eternity? Eternity is forever without time. And there's only two places in the Bible. There's heaven and there's hell. There's no in between. And there's no way out. Once you enter into hell, you don't come out. And 
you are in torment for the rest of your life. For as long as God lives. And when you go into hell, you pay for your own sins that Christ has already paid for you. If you want to do it your own way, you do it in hell. If you want to do it in God's way, you do it by the finished work, by the gospel of Jesus Christ, that He died for your sins. He was buried according to the Scriptures, and arose again the third day in victory. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, We read in Luke 19.10 that the Son of Man came to give life. That is why Christ came, to give you life. Life doesn't begin at 40. Life don't begin at 50. Life begins at Calvary, on your knees, repenting, trusting, and believing in Jesus Christ as your Savior. No Calvary, no repent, no believing, no life. But the world through Him might be saved. God wants you saved. And He has reached out every possible way to do that for you. In Christ Jesus, fulfilling the law 100%. Fulfilling the prophecies 100%. Making sure before he came to that cross, he had done everything. Christ is 100, 200%. He that believes on Him is not condemned. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God will not send you to hell. He'll take you into glory. He'll give you life. Life to be with Him. A new body. No pain. No sorrow. No suffering. But the eternal presence of God and the angels. And to be forever with the one that died for you. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Man goes to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ who paid for your sins. Now you are a sinner because of lies and theft and all the big ten. Which somewhere along the line you're going to break. But those sins are not... Because of those sins you are not cast into hell, but rejected the one that has given you the price has paid the price, and has made the atonement. I have a question for the Jews. The Jews are made by the new child inheritance of the earth. You're talking to the Jews in the kingdom age. The first name in Psalm 37, which we pick up off the earth and all the rights left on them. You mean the wicked will be caught up in the earth? You shall be raised from paradise like the first name. You'll have a thousand year reign and you'll be all destroyed according to the And then you'll get a new heaven, a new earth, and you'll be The condemnation is that when you reject Jesus Christ for what He has done for you, He has paid the price that you could never pay. Hey, buddy, I want you to read something out of the Bible. You can read Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Let him wake him up. Uh, you know, Jesus said, many. I bet it's 149. It's traded by my mom, my family, Psalm 149. It talks about the glory that we have, and it goes to talk about our place kingdom of God, and the wrath of God comes back on us. Yep. Psalm 149. Psalm 149, praise ye the Lord.
I know what you pray, and God we trust on Greenback. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and His praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in Him that made Him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King, capital K. They don't have a King right now, but their King is coming. King Jesus. Let them praise His name in the dance. I got the boogie woogie. But in the dance of praising God, let them sing praises unto Him with a cymbal and harp. Up better than the shook that's on the radio today and in the music store, which is 1A for God. And in that 1A, most of it for money. For the Lord taketh pleasure in His people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. I already told you, we're going to get a new body, those that are saved. We're going to get a body like it unto Jesus Christ. Wonderful gracious. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let a two-edged sword in their hand. That's the word of God. That's not to cut off people's heads. It's to give you salvation. It's to turn you to Jesus. It is to give you the glory, the gospel, written in black and white and in your language, to believe and to behold the wonder, Jesus Christ. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Again, John chapter 3, for those who have rejected Jesus, you're going to get condemnation. You will end up in hell for rejecting Jesus Christ. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. To execute upon them judgment written. This honor has all his things. Praise ye the Lord. You cannot praise the Lord without Jesus Christ as your Savior. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. April 14, 1987, an 18-year-old sinner knelt on his knees in Grandma's house at